Greg Mercer here with part two of my 2011 Pittsburgh Pirates baseball primer. In this edition, I'm going to highlight the starting pitchers, bullpen, and bench for the Pirates. Plus, in true This Week in Real Pirate Ball fashion, I'm going to give you my all-knowing win-loss total for the 2011 Pirates. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. Kevin Correa. Correa was one of the big splashes made by Neil Huntington in the free agency market this offseason, signing a two-year, $8 million contract. Unfortunately, Correa's record as a starter is not very impressive. As a starter, he has a career 464 ERA and 144 whip. I'd love to be excited over a veteran like this, but I have a feeling he's going to disappoint greatly. If Correa could barely keep balls from flying out of Petco, I don't like the chances of this soft-tossing righty keeping lefties from peppering the Clemente wall at PNC. I'd expect an ERA in the low fives and 4-8 to eight wins on the year. Paul Mahalem. Mahalem is going to start the home opener for the Pirates in 2011, and he's the most senior member of the team. During the MLB Network's 30 Clubs in 30 Days Pirates overview, Harold Reynolds claimed that Mahalem was one of the best left-handers in the game. What you talking about, Willis? Paul's a great and humble guy, but I have to disagree. Mahalem is the model of mediocrity. A guy who can eat innings and have a 4.5 ERA and 1.4 whip and win about 10 games. Those are number 4 starter numbers on most teams. I'm not going to change those projections for this year, and it's probably the last time you'll see him for the Pirates. Mahomes will nearly be making $10 million in the next season if his option is picked up, so you might as well call Mahomes a lame duck pirate. James McDonald. McDonald was acquired in the Octavio Dotel trade with the Dodgers last year, and he, along with up-and-coming outfielder Andrew Lambeau, are looking to make that trade a clear win for the Bucks. McDonald was last year's ace out of nowhere as he compiled a 3.52 ERA in his 11 Pirate starts. In most people's minds, McDonald is the true ace of the staff, and if you're a regular viewer of my primers, you know that that means he will acquire the curse of the Pirates' ace the magical force that's been turning last year's best pitcher into complete dog crap for the last eight years. Poop again. I'm not going to predict an awful year for McDonald, but I think a realistic expectation is a mid-force ERA with about 150 strikeouts and 180 innings and 10 wins. Ross Ollendorf. Last year I surmised the curse of the Pirates' ace would rear its ugly head upon Ross, and unfortunately, I was right. Ross battled a back injury, got hit in the head by a line drive, and finished with a 1-11 record. To the shock of pretty much any baseball fan who looks at only wins and losses, Ross managed to get a raise in arbitration this year. But I actually think he deserved it due to the terrible offensive support he was given. He got the loss or the no decision in seven one-run games last year. Anyway, the money must have gone to his head because Ross has had a terrible spring training with an ERA near 10. Money. Pirate starters of the past like Tom Gorzolani have terrible springs and end up having solid seasons, so Pirates fans are hoping the same will happen for Ollendorf. If he stays healthy, Ollendorf should prove to be a decent innings eater with a mid fours ERA and 10 wins. Charlie Morton. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Yes, that Charlie Morton. The guy who had an ERA of 10 after 11 starts last year. <laughs> absolute worst pitcher in baseball last year, but he was still able to win the fifth starter spot for the Pirates out of spring training. Let's give him some credit. He actually pitched quite well in March and earned the spot with a 2.63 ERA. In addition to his good fastball and curve, Tim Kirkshin from ESPN claims that Morton has developed a Roy Halladay-like slider. Morton has all the tools, but he seems to crack under pressure when runners get on base. Makes sense to give Charlie the coveted ace out of nowhere title in 2011, but with his body of work being so poor at the major league level, I just can't realistically expect him to magically become a top level pitcher. I'll predict a high fours ERA with 130 Ks with the hope that we won't have to see guys like Carstens and Burris pitch 20 games this year. 2011 Pirates bullpen is anchored by two strong hammers.
Joe Hanrahan will be the closer, and Evan Meek will be in charge of the 8th inning setup duties. I don't really have anything bad to say about either of these guys, but with the erratic year-to-year nature of relievers, there's a good chance you won't see ERAs in the twos again. As far as the rest of the pen, we've got Jose Veras, Joe Bimel, Chris Resop, Mike Crotta, and Jeff Karstens. Another hodgepodge group full of cheap veterans and middling quadruple-A fodder that will be wildly inconsistent all year and make for their share of heartbreaking late-inning blow-ups. What about the bench? Sadly, it seems like Pirates fans fight more about these guys than they do about some of the terrible retread veteran starters that the Pirates trot out there every year. This year, we've got Ryan Domit, Matt Diaz, Steve Pierce, John Bowker, and Rule 5 pick Josh Rodriguez. Diaz and Pierce profile as serviceable situational hitters against lefties, and Domit should be the primary late-inning lefty power bat against tough righties. Still, I think it goes without saying that most Pirate fans don't want to see these guys starting on a regular basis. It might be interesting to see Steve Pierce get a real chance to prove himself or have Josh Rodriguez push Ronnie Cedeno into stepping up his game, but at the end of the day, a bench player on the Pirates is probably driving the AAA bus on most other teams. You know, I think the Pirates missed out on having the one bench player who could really electrify PNC Park. Braves are up, it's a warning during the stretch, pulling out my hairs. Pinch hitting go, wanna use Freddy's ball. He's a sand friend, my mind is blowing. Two watch, two men on pirates need a run in. And the buck's down to the ninth spot. Potter spot is up, I see my bench. Pearson right, he's dead meat. Falco can't hit fast heat. Don't be fake to cramp up. Which guy should I bet? It's Friday, Friday. Gotta be Brian Friday Everybody's favorite indie Indian It's Friday, Friday Get me Brian Friday Everybody's favorite indie Indian Indian Runs better than, runs better than yeah. Runs better than, runs better than yeah. Runs, 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 runs Two runs scored and now we're winning Let's sum up the pitching for 2011. The Buck starters have a long way to go to even be considered an average staff. They still don't have anyone who profiles to even be a number two starter, and as you heard, my predictions for most of the staff use the same mediocre number four starter quality stats. When looking at minor league help, there are a few interesting pitchers at AAA in Jeff Locke and Rudy Owens. It's a pretty good chance we'll see one or both of them in the second half of the season when at least one of the Pirates starters inevitably sucks or gets hurt. The real impact pitchers are still several years away and are heavily invested in the arms of Jamison Tyone, Stetson Alley, and Luis Heredia. Let's not forget to add the impact of defense. Compared to last year's team, Pirates defense should be marginally better, but I wouldn't expect a sizable difference as positions of strength have shifted to different areas around the diamond in the outfield. Overall, I'm seeing another tough year of pitching with plenty of runs given up, around 800 to 825 to be precise. They gave up only 866 last year, so there's a little bit of a hope for improvement this year. So, what's my prediction for the 2011 Pirates? Losing... Duh. The scoreboard doesn't lie. 65 wins and 97 losses, and a 19th consecutive losing season. I'm going low with my total this year in the hope that I'll be pleasantly surprised. Even with the emergence of the best young offensive players the system has to offer, there's still going to be some major bumps in the road. I just don't see this offense making up enough runs to counteract the team's overwhelming lack of quality starting pitching and defensive shortcomings. While new manager Clint Hurdle gives a revived sense of excitement to the players and fans, you have to remember that managers don't play the games. If you don't have enough talent, you're simply not going to win. I'd advise Pirate fans to ignore the wins, and especially the losses, and to sit back and enjoy watching our young offensive core and watch for the continued development of players in the minor league system. Well, that about does it for my 2011 Pirates Baseball Primer. Join me next week to start up this week in Real Pirate Ball for 2011. I'm Greg Mercer. Later.